They are using Islamist tactics to invert reality. What they're seeking, they have a grotesque Holocaust envy. The Muslim community and the Jewish community are being othered and made into the boogeyman by this administration. We are going to fight this administration and the oppressive Netanyahu administration until we take our last breath. What you are seeing is full-blown Islamist propaganda. These are professional victim-mongering women who unfortunately have been elected to Congress but are using every tool in the playbook of the Muslim Brotherhood of Islamists. First, they demonize the Jewish people. Second, they eradicate the Jewish nation. Their agenda, their proposed meeting, was a congressional delegation to Palestine, not even mentioning Israel. Now that they have, we ha Israel has called their bluff, now they are claiming victimhood. The role of victimhood in Islamism is absolutely central because they want to appear that they are under siege by their words. An oppressive superpower in the United States here, their own government, an oppressive Israel so-called. This is exactly the Islamist ideology and it should be, it's just tripe. That's what it is. I, in, in some ways, I wish we were not giving them as much right. oxygen. It is unfortunate that Prime Minister Netanyahu has apparently taken a page out of Trump's book and even direction from Trump to deny this opportunity. They could be if they were pluralist Muslims, if they knew what was in the Quran, where we recognize Jews, where we recognize the sanctity of Moses, the holiness of the Torah. But they're not. They are using Islamist tactics to invert reality. What they're seeking, they have a grotesque Holocaust envy. And just hear me out on that. Islamists envy what they see as the special mark upon the Jewish people that is the membership of genocide. It's a terrible thing that befell the Jewish people, but Islamists envy it. They want to take over and appear the most persecuted, the most victimized, the most disadvantaged, while they deny the Holocaust, while they deny the existence of Israel. This is why you are seeing this. There is nothing genuine about these politicians. I don't care whether they were Democrats or Republicans. The question is, where is the Speaker of the House? Where is the Speaker Pelosi to not just I, reprimand them, silence and marginalize them? That's what I'm upset about. The first two Muslim American women elected to Congress is nothing less than an attempt by an ally of the United States to suppress our ability to do our jobs as elected officials. It's just diabolical that she commits yet another violence against the families of survivors of 9-11 and the families of victims of 9-11. She is depicting in this diminishment what I would describe as an, a profound denial of 9-11. And as you know, I work a lot with anti-Semitism, and it reminds me of the mentality of Holocaust deniers, or as we've seen in Rwanda, there are some who would deny the genocide there too. So this denial raises in me a couple of questions. Does she really think 9-11 was not an Islamist jihadist attack, which came from within the Muslim fold? The Quran tells us, Islam tells us, we must be strict in observing justice, even if it means, means bearing witness against ourselves, against our kith and our kin. And it also tells us we have to do that with impartiality. We cannot be biased if we have certain prejudices. She harbors prejudices. She diminished the worst attack on this country since Pearl Harbor. And she does an assault on my patients and all families who are grieving for their survivors. It's despicable. Worse is that opponents, whether in her party or not, are shielding her from the kind of searing criticism she deserves.